a new space race is underway but this time, the competition is between the United States and China, both targeting the moon's resource-rich South Pole. The stakes are higher than ever, whoever establishes a sustained presence first could set the rules for lunar governance and resource use. This isn't just about national pride, it's about economic opportunity, strategic influence and the future of space exploration. The moon's South Pole is believed to hold vast quantities of water ice, a critical resource for sustaining human life and producing rocket fuel. The urgency was clear in Washington this week, as senators and experts debated America's progress versus China's ambitions. Unlike the Apollo era, today's U.S. strategy relies on public-private partnerships, with NASA's Artemis program leaning on commercial innovators like SpaceX. This approach promises sustainability and cost-effectiveness, aiming to create a long-term human presence on the moon, but introduces new risks and uncertainties. Failures and setbacks are inevitable in such a complex endeavor. The debate now centers on how America should reach for the stars stick with tradition or embrace bold new models. The choice will shape the future of space exploration. The moon is more than a destination. It's a stepping stone for Mars and beyond, and the nation that leads here could shape humanity's future in space. Establishing a foothold on the moon could pave the way for missions to Mars and other distant worlds. The decisions made now will define America's role in the cosmos for decades to come, influencing not just national destiny but the future of human civilization in space. On September 3, 2025, former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine delivered a stark warning to the Senate. America is unlikely to land on the moon before China. He criticized NASA's reliance on SpaceX's Starship for the Artemis program, calling it a risky and unproven choice. Bridenstine argued that the current plan is fundamentally flawed and that no permanent NASA administrator would have approved it. He warned that seeing a Chinese flag on the lunar South Pole first would be a blow to U.S. prestige and global leadership. Bridenstine's testimony was a call to return to traditional government-led systems, arguing that America can't afford to gamble on commercial innovation. His appearance added fuel to a growing debate in Congress over the best path forward for America's lunar ambitions. Bridenstine's main critique targets the complexity of SpaceX's Starship lunar architecture, especially its reliance on orbital refueling. The plan requires multiple Starship launches and in-orbit transfers of cryogenic propellants, technology never before demonstrated at this scale. He argued that a single failure in this chain could doom the mission, making the approach too risky. In contrast, Bridenstine championed the government-owned SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft, citing their reliability despite higher costs. He also advocated for the Lunar Gateway, a mini-space station in lunar orbit, as a more dependable infrastructure. For Bridenstine, certainty and government control outweigh the risks of commercial innovation. He believes abandoning this path for SpaceX's ambitious system could cost America its leadership in space. The debate boils down to a choice-proven reliability or bold innovation. SpaceX, led by Elon Musk, countered Bridenstine's criticism with real progress. In 2024, SpaceX successfully demonstrated orbital cryogenic propellant transfer, proving the core technology behind their lunar plan. Musk noted that Starship's rapid development has reduced the number of required tanker flights, lowering mission risk. SpaceX's experience with autonomous docking, honed through years of Dragon missions to the ISS, adds confidence to their approach. Critics, Musk argued, are judging Starship by outdated standards, ignoring its rapid evolution. SpaceX's iterative development model allows them to solve problems and advance technology faster than traditional programs. The Starship that will fly to the moon will be even more capable than today's version. SpaceX insists it's on track to support Artemis III, making innovation its greatest strength. While the U.S. debates its next steps in space exploration, weighing budgets, priorities, and the balance between public and private partnerships, China's lunar program advances steadily, propelled by a clear national vision and unwavering government support. The China National Space Administration aims to land Taikonauts on the moon by 2030, or perhaps even sooner, according to some experts who point to the rapid pace of recent developments. China's methodical, state-backed approach contrasts sharply with America's more decentralized public-private model, where innovation thrives but coordination can lag. The Chang'e robotic missions have given China valuable experience and data, building a foundation for more ambitious crewed missions.
Their human lander hardware is progressing rapidly, with new prototypes and technologies being tested at an impressive rate. The first nation to establish a long-term presence at the lunar south pole could set the rules for resource use, scientific research, and international cooperation for decades to come. U.S. officials worry China might claim exclusive rights to key areas, potentially limiting access for other nations and shifting the balance of power in space. Such moves could challenge the long-held idea of space as a global commons, open to all and governed by international agreements. China's consistent government support allows for meticulous planning and execution, ensuring that setbacks are addressed quickly and goals remain in focus. This makes them a formidable competitor, one that is determined to shape the future of lunar exploration. Their relentless progress is a wake-up call for the U.S., a reminder that leadership in space is not guaranteed, and the stakes are higher than ever. The lunar frontier is up for grabs, and the outcome will shape humanity's future beyond Earth. The moon race has exposed deep divisions in Congress over NASA's future. Lawmakers are torn between supporting traditional, job-creating programs like SLS and Orion, and embracing innovative, lower-cost commercial solutions. The Trump administration's proposal to end SLS and Orion after Artemis III met fierce resistance, with Congress allocating billions to keep them alive. Some senators advocate for a dual lander approach, adding Blue Origin to ensure competition and redundancy. Budget pressures complicate everything. Proposed cuts could delay lunar missions and risk ceding leadership to China. The debate is about more than rockets, it's about America's role in space and how best to secure it. Congress must choose which vision to back, while fighting for the funding to make any moonshot possible. The outcome will shape NASA's direction for years to come. Despite controversy and skepticism, America's bold bet on commercial innovation is what keeps it ahead in the new moon race. This approach, though sometimes criticized for its risks, is fueling a new era of space exploration and technological progress. The old government-led model, while historic, is simply too slow and expensive to compete with SpaceX's rapid, risk-tolerant approach. Private companies can iterate quickly, learn from failures and push boundaries in ways that government agencies often can't. Starship's complexity is a feature, not a bug. It's the key to unlocking the solar system, from the moon to Mars. Its ambitious design allows for missions that were once only science fiction, opening doors to new possibilities for human exploration. By mastering orbital refueling and reusability, NASA and SpaceX are building the infrastructure for the next century of exploration. These breakthroughs will make deep space missions more sustainable and affordable, paving the way for a permanent human presence beyond Earth. SpaceX's operational tempo and culture of continuous improvement are unmatched by traditional programs. Their ability to launch, land, and relaunch rockets in rapid succession is transforming what's possible in spaceflight. The commercial model delivers cutting-edge capabilities faster and cheaper, giving America a true edge over China's state-run system. This advantage is crucial as the global competition for space leadership intensifies. The race is between two visions, methodical state control versus dynamic public-private partnership. America's collaborative model brings together the best of both worlds, government resources and private sector ingenuity. By embracing innovation and empowering private enterprise, America isn't just aiming to win the moon, it's laying the foundation to lead humanity into the future, inspiring generations to dream bigger and reach farther than ever before.